This right here is the sneakiest medical emergency of all time. Everyone, Evan the Paramedic Coach, I'm back here with another practice question and gonna give you a lecture right after that. Be sure to hit like, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's uncover that question. Here it is. 74-year-old female complains of palpitations and difficulty breathing. Her lung sounds are clear. She tells you she takes a Nastrozole. You suspect. A, asthma. B, pulmonary embolism. C, COPD. Or D, an SVT. Now, I'm giving you a, a few different things to look at here. First, 74-year-old female takes a Nastrozole. Do you know what that drug is? It treats breast cancer. So we have a 74-year-old female breast cancer patient, palpitations, difficulty breathing. Now, I haven't given you vitals, but I have given you one pearl. Cancer is a risk factor of one of these things. Clear lung sounds. Pulmonary embolism. Now, why is pulmonary embolism so sneaky? I'm going to tell you right now, and we're going to break this down so that way in the field, you never, ever miss this. Here we go. If we're going to understand the sneaky medical emergency of pulmonary embolism and not miss it, anything, we got to know four things about the medical emergency. Here it is. One, what is it? Two, what are the risk factors? Three, what are the hallmark signs and symptoms? And four, how do we treat it in EMS? So first off, what is pulmonary embolism? Pulmonary embolism is, very simply put, a lung attack, like a heart attack is a, is a heart attack, and a stroke is a brain attack. The tissues of the lungs are under attack. The blood supply of the lungs are under attack because what is happening is the pulmonary arteries are being blocked by a clot. Usually, this originates from a DVT in the leg. And if you understand heart blood flow, that uh, piece of plaque can come off that clot in the deep vein, go up the venous system, up through the heart blood flow, and we end up in the pulmonary artery and get stuck. That's what we have, a pulmonary embolism. Okay, the pulmonary arteries are being blocked, thus the lungs are not getting blood flow. They are dying. It's a lung attack. Major medical emergency. This is such a big deal. When you are a paramedic and you learn about the H's and T's, what can actually give your patient the status of cardiac arrest? On the T's, thrombosis, which is a clot in the body, PE's on there. It can be deadly. Okay. Now, risk factors. Risk factors of PE. There's a, a large list I'm going to put on the screen here. Want to name a few for you right now. We talked about cancer. Yes. Bed rest is another one. Okay. Birth control. If you're taking birth control pills, you can be at more of a risk. Higher estrogen states. Okay. We talked about cancer already. Smoking and any sort of recent surgery or vascular surgery and also any period of stasis like I'm staying still. So like a long plane ride, a long bus ride, we're talking about bed rest, those are risk factors and I have a whole list here of pulmonary embolism. Now, what are the signs and symptoms? We kind of touched them a little bit, but remember, you got to remember this, the bronchi in the lungs, the airways in the lungs, they are not under attack. They're not being clogged. This is not asthma. This is not anaphylaxis. This is not COPD. This is not CHF. This is pulmonary embolism, which it has to do with actually the arteries. It's a circulation issue, okay? But it involves the lungs. So don't get tripped up by that. Remember that it's an artery issue. The blood supply that feeds the lung to make it alive is being blocked. Now, sign symptoms. You may get clear lung sounds bilaterally, initially, if you're early, okay? They could, now, later on, they could be diminished because lung is dying. But remember, we're not going to hear any wheezing. We're not going to hear any rails. We're not going to hear any ronk. We're not going to hear any of that, okay? It could be clear bilaterally. The other thing you want to remember is you're going to have a high heart rate, a tachycardia, 
let's say 120, 130, 140, 110, whatever it is, okay? But they're gonna be hypoxic. So the SpO2 is gonna be low. Their chief complaint is gonna be chest pain and difficulty breathing, all right? They may feel like they wanna pass out, okay? Sign and symptoms. EMS treatment. We need to give these patients oxygen. SpO2 is low. We need to give you supplemental oxygen. Could be a non breather, of course, okay? We do that. What else do we do? Ear ALS, do an EKG, I'll take two IVs. 18 and 18, 20, 20, I'm fine with that. I'll take two IVs. This is a life threat. Now in hospital, they're gonna give the patient heparin. Okay, heparin's going to help break this clot up. I wanna tell you one thing before I go. I've seen throughout my career, people that are even young, 20s, 30s, but there were smokers, heavy smokers, and they've gotten this. So watch out for this. Anyone who complains, chest pain, difficulty breathing, acutely, like happens quick, don't forget about this. It's on a lot of my mnemonics. Remember this, my friends. I will see you in the next video. And if you didn't know, I've created a video resource, over 420 videos of content, so you can master this EMS content. EMT, advanced EMT, paramedic and all of my national registry prep, everything is down below. First link in the description, click that, and I give you a lifetime access to my absolutely best work. My friends, I will see you in the next video. Take care.